Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. I am coming to you live for episode three of my series, Magic is Real. I'm going to be going live uh, pretty often over the next week or so to talk about some of the ways that magic can show up for us in our lives. Um, I am doing this because I'm currently enrolling for the autumn 2020 round of my course, Myths and Magic, which begins on October 18th. That's a Sunday. And I'm really, really excited to go ahead and get started. And I want to make sure that everyone uh, who may feel aligned with it knows about it knows what's happening and importantly I want to give some concrete examples of how magic can show up for us in our lives and what that can look like right because if we don't have a good example of what that it might look like when magic shows up for us then it's hard to sort of just believe something or take it on blind faith right it's wonderful if we can like make that leap and start a practice and see how it shows up for us but uh, sometimes in order to really believe that something is worth our efforts we want to start seeing uh, results of what magic looks like for those who do choose to practice it. And I know that one of the ways that a lot of my friends have been inspired uh, to take up a magical practice of their own has been when I've shared my personal stories. So I'm going to share some more of my personal stories here on my social media so that I can talk about how magic shows up and I can give people concrete examples of what that might look like. So today I'm going to be telling the story of the time that I got catfished by Loki. And that I do mean uh, the Norse god. <laughs> I do not mean uh, Tom Hiddleston, although he portrays him marvelously, in my opinion, uh, in the Marvel verse, in the uh, the Avengers movies. Um, I, I don't mean uh, I don't mean that. I mean I got catfished by the Norse god Loki. <laughs> he showed up for me um, in a uh, in a very particular way after I was told quite specifically, that he wanted to work with me and I expressed some skepticism around, around that. So I'm going to tell that story <laughs> in the hopes that communicating those details is going to show um, how magic is real and how magic can show up for us in these very specific and uh, wildly uncanny kind of ways. Uh, so this is a story uh, that begins in about early 2018. And on this particular day, I was on the phone uh, with a woman who was my tarot reader at the time. Uh, she would read cards for me every once in a while. Um, I, would, I would go to her, I would book a session to get some guidance. And I had called her up that day about some things. And one of the things that had come up in the reading is she told me that Loki wanted to work with me. So Loki, for those of you who might not know, is a Norse trickster god. He's the brother of Thor, right? We see him in the Marvel movies. He's uh, one of the Avengers and he's, um, he's kind of got a bit of a bad reputation, right? He's not a bad guy, but in some of the movies he's been the villain or whatever because his, uh, his tricksterhood or his, his ego um, is something that maybe gets the best of him. And he doesn't always necessarily make the most mature decisions. Even in Norse mythology, there's some things that he did where he was playing some practical jokes on people and he actually got them hurt or maybe even killed. And, um, and, and he doesn't have a bad heart um, but he maybe took some of his trick trickster tactics a little too far. So what my tarot reader told me, essentially, and I didn't really fully understand this at the time, but she was like, Loki wants to work with you because he admires your work in the field of seduction. For those of you who don't know, I used to be a pickup artist before, uh, before I, I changed my wicked ways, right? And even when I was in the field of seduction, there is a similarity between seduction and trickstery in that, in both cases, we're kind of staying several steps ahead of a lot of the other people in the room, right? You need to set up uh, that sort of scenario in order for someone to be able to walk into it, whether it's that practical joke that you're setting someone up for, or whether you're creating an emotional journey with the intent of setting up a path for someone to take that leads to them saying yes to you, right? That's essentially what my approach to seduction was, that I'm leading someone on an emotional journey that I'm thinking about and I'm planning it out, right? Um, but I don't want to ever coerce someone or cause negative feelings uh, in a way that uh, that causes them to feel bad, um, because that's either a bad seduction, right? Either you're making someone feel bad and that's not actually going to be seductive. Um, we don't want to be around people who make us feel bad, ideally, right? Or 
you're trying to make someone feel bad in order to use like fear and scarcity tactics in order to be with them. And that is not sustainable, right? We don't want people, we don't want to, to, to attract people to us um, by manipulating them in order to make them feel bad. I was absolutely guilty of emotionally manipulating people, but I would emotionally manipulate them to make them feel good, right? That was my overall strategy when I was working in the field of seduction. My overall sort of thesis of it was, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to, um, when we spend time together, I'm going to uh, basically orchestrate these circumstances that are designed to appeal to your tastes and your moods and in doing so, I'm gonna create these positive feelings and these feelings of pleasure, and they're always gonna be anchored to my presence, right? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm training your brain to feel good when you're around me. It was a lot of work too, right? It was a lot of mo emotional labor. And ultimately, um, it wasn't in alignment for me to continue down that path and keep spending my energy on what essentially amounted to like very smart strategic people pleasing, right? I was putting a lot of energy into making people feel good, right, in these ways that sort of involved a little of that like Loki-esque, I'm a little a couple steps ahead of you and I'm sort of setting things up for you to sort of walk into. Only instead of traps and, you know, having them get punked or pranked or feel bad or, or whatever. For me, it was about getting them to feel pleasure. So in my understanding, and I would not have been able to articulate this at the time, but I've learned uh, this from Loki since we've been working together since this happened. Um, Essentially, what I understood about this is that my work in seduction sort of validated for him uh, his sense of tricksterhood, especially as we're all going through this collective evolution, right? What I'm getting the sense of is, is that, um, you know, uh, uh, he doesn't want to cause pain. Um, he doesn't want to keep being written off as the villain or the bad guy, but he doesn't want to have to completely change who he is or how he relates uh, to the world and to the Pantheon uh, in order to, um, you know, in, in order to make that change, right? So my work essentially sort of validated a lot of the tactics of tricksterhood um, by using them without the negative feelings, right? And the common denominator being like, we're just trying to find shortcuts, right? Or we're trying, or we're feeling we're feeling like we want to use uh, our wit, right? Our our um, sort of a common a common sort of denominator with tricksters is that they very often feel like they are the smartest person in the room, and they may result to trickery um, out of boredom, right? Out of like this is this meeting is so boring. This is going on. I'm gonna set up this thing for a practical joke because like you know I, I'm just I'm bored by everything that's going on and uh, I want to have a laugh, right? So there's a lot of trickery that ends up being um, you know out of that sort of motivation. And we don't have to apologize for the fact that we may actually be um, you know that we may be wired to be that sort of witty, putting you know making connections more quickly than your average person being a couple steps ahead of the rest of the room. Um, we don't necessarily have to apologize for that. Um, we just want to use that to positive ends or rather than uh, toward creating chaos or discord, right? Does that make sense, hopefully? Um, so apparently my work in that field was fairly validating to Loki and he wanted to, um, to work with me in order to sort of learn more about that energy uh, because um, he didn't want to have to engage in self-improvement to the point of absolutely denying who he is. Um, I have a feeling um, that uh, that Loki, were he in human form, um, would essentially be categorized as autistic, <laughs> you know, as I have categorized myself. Um, that that common denominator being that uh, people with autism tend to make connections more quickly, um, which is why sometimes it's it may be difficult to uh, for us to like people don't always get our jokes or whatever, right? Or we're like kind of a step ahead, or we may have to like slow down and explain things. That same root of thinking ahead and making those connections, I believe, is also the root of the sort of underlying boredom that can lead people um, to using trickster tactics as a means of kind of like entertaining themselves when it feels like the rest of the room isn't like in on the joke, right? <laughs> so, um, so that's my theory, <laughs> is that we're Loki in human form, um, we would say that, that he likely has autism. Uh, the same kind of uh, sense of humor, the love of wordplay, right? Like there's a lot of that sort of going on. So, um, so that was my impression. Basically, my tarot reader told me that afternoon, like, like, yes, Loki wants to work with you. And my response to this, I didn't really understand any of that energy at the time, right? This was completely out of the blue for me. And I was a little scared because I was like, 
I was like, but he's a, a trickster. Like how, you know, and so what I said to her is I said, I was like, well, how do I know I can trust him? That was the question I asked. How do I know I can trust him? And she said in response, she goes, oh, he just laughed a little bit and said, well, <laughs> I am a trickster, <laughs> you know, so it goes. And so the rest of the tarot reading went on and that was, you know, about it. And I didn't think more about it. Later that night, this is about maybe eight hours later, it's like pretty like well after midnight and I'm at a bar in San Diego with some friends. And I meet this guy at the bar and, you know, we've asked each other, oh yeah, what are you doing here? What are you, you know, and he's like, oh, I'm in town for a couple weeks on business. Oh, cool. What kind of business do you do? Oh, I'm in marketing for apparel. He says, I work uh, with a brand right now called Salty Crew. He says his name is Jacob. And he tells me, uh, you know, yeah, he's working for Salty Crew right now. It's a new gig. Um, but he used to work, he tells me, he used to work for American Apparel. And he worked for American Apparel under Dove Charney. Dove Charney was the CEO of American Apparel who, um, I'm pretty sure was was ousted. I don't remember the full story, but he was very problematic. Um, a lot of very harmful, um, a lot of sexual assault, sexual harassment allegations from within the company. Um, he eventually stepped down. Um, but maybe 10 years ago or so in the sort of heyday of this, you know, before the Me Too movement, right? When a lot of men could get away with more like that. There was this sort of cult of worship around Dove Charney, uh, who also had a sort of trickster energy to him uh, and uh, and who worked with uh, Ryan Holiday, uh, who would later go on to be a best-selling author. Uh, at the time, he was apprenticing, right? He was working for it, but he was really like apprenticing uh, for Dove Charney, uh, working with branding at American Apparel. And what Ryan Holiday um, would go on to do is he would write a book called Trust Me, I'm Lying, Confessions of a Media Manipulator. And he talked about in this book how he worked for American Apparel and he was working for some other independent clients and he would have like 50 anonymous email accounts where he could, you know, report anonymous tips to the media, right? Or say like, oh, you should be looking into this. You should write about this. Or he would respond to media queries that were looking for an expert in something, right? And he would just write to them and say, oh, hey, here's my fake email address. I'm an expert, quote me, right? And he cataloged all of this experience and he wrote about it in this book called Trust Me, I'm Lying. So he was doing these really sort of underhanded, um, morally ambiguous, ambiguous things um, in order to get publicity in the media, right? In order to, um, you know, he did this for American Apparel. Uh, he did this also for uh, uh, for Tucker Max, who is also kind of a problematic bro kind of guy, who is an author of a book called I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, uh, Confections of a Toxic Bachelor or whatever, which are these short stories that by today's standards would really be um, like not funny at all, I hope, um, but really about all these ways that he went out and mistreated women when he was dating them. At the time, it was considered funny, right? Again, this is before the Me Too movement. And Ryan Holiday worked for Tucker Max when I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, his book, was made into a movie. And so he would do things like he would email and be like, oh, this movie is so evil and it's about mistreating women and we should organize a protest about this. And he would write this and send these tips to the right people. And sure enough, people started organizing protests. Oh, well, they shouldn't be screening this movie here. This is bad. This is, you know, and then he would write to the media and say, oh, they're organizing protests against this movie. What's going on? You should cover this. And sure enough, there was a lot of media coverage about the movie because of this stuff that he stirred up, right? He was like Eris throwing the apple of discord, right? Getting people to fight one another. And then he would say, oh, look at this. And sure enough, what did that lead to? Free publicity for the movie, saying basically this is a super offensive movie um, about a dude who is not treating women well, right? And that's what it was. And the more that that was in the media, the more it was going to attract the kind of viewers who wanted to go see that movie, right? So he was doing that kind of thing. And then eventually he wrote this book called Trust Me, I'm Lying, which I interpret as sort of like um, sort of almost a redemption narrative. He was like, yeah, I did all these bad things, but I want you to see now um, how easily your press is manipulated, right? And how much discernment you should really be using when engaging with pieces of media, because there could be people like me out there who are just emailing, you know, and basically trolling people and claiming to be experts. Another thing Ryan Holiday did that's a pretty funny story is he... Um, he was applying for an apartment or a, or a house or whatever. And he went and as proof of his income, 
he he needed proof that he had the money to pay for this place he wanted to move into. So he went and he hacked into editing his own Wikipedia page to say that he had received a half a million dollar advance for his book, which apparently was not true. And then he printed out his Wikipedia page and he gave it to the person who needed to approve his rental or mortgage or whatever it was. And they were like, oh, well, clearly you have the money to afford this place. So yeah, we'll run you right through, right? So again, tricksterhood, morally ambiguous, right? Lots of that stuff going on. So this guy, Ryan Holiday, worked for Dove Charney at American Apparel. And then let's go back to the story, right? That was a bit of a tangent, right? So there I am at the bar. I had to say that to like set up why this is relevant. There I am at the bar in San Diego. And this guy who has introduced me and said his name is Jacob and he works for this brand Salty Crew. Um, and he said he used to work for American Apparel under Dove Charney. So I heard that. And of course, the first thing I thought of was, oh, did you know Ryan Holiday? Did you work there at the same time as Ryan Holiday? And he goes, oh, Ryan Holiday. <laughs> you know, he goes, that kid's a loser. That kid's whatever. And I'm like, well, what? Didn't you like trust me? I'm lying. I thought it was a great book. And then he looks around and he looks at me and he goes, I am Ryan Holiday. And I was like, what? Whoa. And I was like, okay, wow. You look really different with a beard. Now I had seen Ryan Holiday before. I had seen interviews with him on YouTube. Um, I follow his Twitter. His Twitter picture is his face, but it's with his hands over it, right? So I've seen him before and I remember what his face looks like. He's got a long kind of face, you know, palish skin about my complexion um, and uh, blue eyes, brown hair and these like high cheekbones and kind of long face, right? Very Loki-esque, right? Very Loki looking. Um, same kind of overall look. and. This guy that I met at this bar, um, same features, longish kind of face, high cheekbones, blue eyes, um, but he looks a little worse for the wear. He looks older than I remember Ryan Holiday looking. But then again, I'm like, oh, it has been like five years. Maybe he's just had a kind of a, maybe he's just kind of had a rough time. And also he's a little drunk, a little red in the face right now. You know, maybe he's underslept. He doesn't look that great. And he had a beard. So I was, I was like, oh, wow. I was like, you look really different with a beard, right? But he's telling me that he's Ryan Holiday, so I'm like, I'm, you know, that's, it just, it makes sense. And he does, you know, he does look like him. He just looks a little older and a little different with a beard. But I'm like, okay, let's go with this. I'm probably like, at that point, I'm probably a little bit drunk too, right? And so it's a bar, it's getting to closing time. It's like 2 a.m. in San Diego. And I really am interested in continuing this conversation because I'm such a fan of Ryan Holiday's work, right? Um, I mean, yeah, I look at it with, with skepticism and discernment and a grain of salt, right? But I read Trust Me, I'm Lying. It's really cool. I like this idea of, you know, being sort of on top of the media and being, you know, um, obviously, like I come from that background in seduction. And, um, and for me, it's about, um, uh, you know, just being a couple steps ahead and being clever, right? It's, I appreciate things that are clever. So I suggest to him, I'm like, well, let's go hang out somewhere. Like, I'd, like, I'd love to keep talking to you. And... It's 2 a.m. in San Diego, so everything is closed. So he invites me back to his hotel room. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll hang in your hotel room. But like, you know, in, in my estimation, I'm like, we're just, we're just going to, it's just because there's nowhere else to go, right? And we're just going to keep talking. So I meet him over at his hotel room uh, where he's staying because, again, he's in town to work uh, a marketing gig for this brand. So he's traveling for a couple weeks. So I meet him there and, um, and he's still a little drunk and he starts kind of hitting on me, right? And he starts kind of getting, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, I thought I was here to like geek out with you about marketing. I thought we were here to have a conversation. And he was like, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. And I said, besides, I thought you were married. And he looks at me and gets this sad look in his eyes and his eyes actually well up a little bit. And he goes, well, not anymore. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, that could also account for why you don't look so good. You've been going through a divorce, right? That'll age you like nothing else. <laughs> so I was like, that kind of makes sense. And again, you know, like a little drunk, we're, we're neither of us at our best. Um, so we hang out and we chat and, um, and we kind of cuddle, right? Um, but I told him, I was like, listen, um, I'm not hooking up with you tonight because it's two in the morning and we've just met. Um, but if what you say is true, then, you know, you have my number now. So let's hang out like later in the week. Let's go on like an actual date when it's a normal hour and we're sober, right? Let's start this off on the right foot if that's what you want. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I was like, but listen, I need to make sure that 
you're divorced like you say you are, right? I've been, as a former pickup artist, you know, like as much, um, as much of a reputation as I may have opened myself up to um, by declaring myself a pickup artist and working in the field of seduction, um, relationship agreements are really important to me. And in the past, I had experiences where I was lied to by a person and I thought everything was cool and it was not cool, right? So I really now work to do my due diligence to make sure that um, a person has, you know, that, that, that they can go on a date with me and be in integrity with their relationship agreements. So I said to him, I was like, all right, listen, I'm going to make sure like we have a mutual friend. Our friend Adam Lyons is a mutual friend and I'm going to reach out to him and I'm going to make sure that what you say is true. And if he can confirm that you are indeed split from your, I guess, ex-wife, um, then we can hang out and that's great. Right. But I'm going to do my due diligence before I commit to anything. And he's like, yeah, 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 that's cool. And, you know, and so we hang out and we chat and then sure enough, like I leave and I, you know, go home or wherever, you know, and, um, and sure enough, like I text Adam the next day and I tell him what happened. And, uh, and I say like, you know, to your knowledge is, I think mean, I said, I think I met Ryan holiday. Like is, but is he divorced? Like I ran into a bar and he said, he's, you know, like what's going, what's going on, you know, and, and whatever. And, uh, uh, and Adam said, I hadn't heard about that, but that doesn't mean it's not true. I'll go ahead and I'll look into that for you and, you know, make sure that everything is, is above board. And so a couple days go by. Um, and in the meantime, I'm kind of interested in, in what's popping up, right? This seems like a pretty, pretty weird random coincidence. So, so I go and I look on YouTube and I'm watching some of Ryan's interviews and I go and I look on his Twitter and see what he's been up to lately. You know, is he working for this other brand? What's going on? And, um, I was like, yeah, I, I thought he's, you know, mostly moved on to being like a best selling author now, but who knows, maybe for the right price, he's still working for other companies. And I'm looking through and I'm like, man, something just doesn't seem to add up. You know, I'm trying to look for recent photos of him, which are hard to find. Um, I'm like, man, are all these photos of him just when he was younger? Or does he really like, you know, I don't, can't see any, I don't see any photos of him with a beard. I don't see any photos of him like looking a little more weathered. You know, I'm wondering, I'm like, there's, is there something off? You know, I can't find anything that really looks like the way that this guy looked the other night that I met at the bar. So I don't know what's up. So that evening, this is like three days later now, like three days later after the incident that I met him at the bar and I'm sitting at home and I'm a little stoned, you know, <laughs> I'm a regular evening cannabis user and I'm watching Netflix and I have Netflix on just kind of like in the background. Uh, I have this docu-series on called Myths and Monsters, uh, which is obviously like appeals to my taste and everything, but it's like a docu-series. It's about mythology and I'm not really like, it's not, it doesn't have my full attention, but it's like kind of nice to have on and, you know, watching it there and I'm texting with my friend Adam. And I'm texting Adam and I'm like, I think something is off. I'm not sure if this guy really was Ryan Holiday and, and I'm not sure how to, you know, I don't know. And then I realized I'm like, wait, I can check his phone number, the phone number that this guy gave me against the phone number that Adam has for Ryan Holiday. So I'm like, is this his phone number? This is how I'm going to figure it out, you know? And Adam takes a look. And he's like, oh, no, hon, I'm so sorry. That's not him. That's, you know that's not his phone number. I think you've been catfished. And I'm like, Oh man, like I feel like a dumbass." And Adam's like, no, you're not a dumbass. You did the right thing. You checked up, right? You, you didn't just believe it. You actually asked me and you followed through. So that's actually means that you're quite smart. Right. But I'm sitting there being like, Oh my God, I can't believe like, I actually thought that guy was Ryan holiday. And he was just like lying to me to impress me. Cause it was like 2 AM at a bar in San Diego. Right. And as I'm texting with Adam, I see on my computer screen where I have this Netflix docuseries Myths and Monsters on, I look at it and sure enough, Loki appears right on screen and they're telling this story of Loki and some practical jokes that he's played. And all of a sudden I hadn't thought back to that conversation that I had with my tarot reader because it was so brief. It was just like this, oh, Loki wants to work with you. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't know about that. And again, what did I ask? I said, well, how do I know I can trust him? Right? And I suddenly realized what had happened, right? As soon as I had asked, how do I know I can trust him? What happened was that night, just hours later, I got catfished by a guy pretending to be Ryan Holiday, who is the author of a book called 
trust me, I'm lying, right? Who is that classic trickster archetype who also resembles Loki, right? Has that Loki energy with that, those high cheekbones, you know, and the pale complexion and uh, the, the dark hair, you know, the blue eyes. Um, I actually, uh, in my understanding, Loki's eyes are a little more like green hazel, but it's still like pretty close, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, man, there I was. And I was just like, oh my gosh, wow. Magic is real, right? There I was asking, how can I trust him? And what happened is he came in and he punked me, but no damage was done, right? No actual harm took place for me. He was just playing a joke on me. Um, but essentially he was basically kind of like, look, I, I, yeah, if I was going to do more, like I, I would have, right? I have no desire to hurt you, but I'm going to prank you and get your attention and let you know that I'm here and I'm, you know, also clever and just as clever as you are. And this is a language that we speak together. And I was like, oh man, this is wild. So as soon as I put together those connections in my head, I texted, it was super late at night at this point, because of course I'm up really late processing all of this. And so I text my brother, Russ Marshalik, who is also an occultist, my spiritual brother who lives in New York City. He gets up really early to like go to the gym and do his workout because he's a fitness witch. And so he was already awake. So I texted him, he's like already at the gym, right? And I was like, hey, um, do you know anything about working with Loki? And he was like, Loki, no, I don't, I don't I'm, that's not, you know, I haven't worked with him before, why do you ask? So I told him the story and I was like, well, apparently Loki wants to work with me. I asked how he could trust him, how I could trust him. And then that same night I got catfished by a guy pretending to be Ryan Holiday, the author of the book, Trust Me, I'm Lying, right? All about using that tricksterhood for perhaps slightly nefarious purposes and then coming around to that same redemption story um, by making it transparent and publishing about it, right? And advising people to use discernment in their media consumption. So, Russ says to me, my brother Russ says to me in response to this, he says, um, I was just talking about Ryan Holiday, not five minutes ago. So there's your confirmation, right? That's a synchronicity. That's when we get a little synchronicity. It's like that little boop on the nose. It says, yep, yes, this, that was on purpose, right? So every possible sign I could need is coming in. And then I start to be like, well, who was this guy? Who was this guy that I met? I guess who was not Ryan Holiday? And I went and I Googled, I was like, oh, I remember he gave me that name, Jacob, right? Maybe that was actually his real name. And then he just pretended it was a fake name because he was pretending to be Ryan Holiday. I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't think Ryan Holiday was so famous that he needed like to go out to a bar in San Diego using a fake name. But then like, I don't know his life. So I don't know. Right. So I Google, I'm trying to figure out who this guy is. And I'm, so I'm Googling like Jacob, Salty Crew, American Apparel, hoping that maybe like a LinkedIn profile or something like that will come up. And, uh, and none of that comes up, but what does come up are all these photos of this model, I guess, wearing an American apparel brand whose name is maybe Jacob. And he has the same exact features, the same long face, high cheekbones, pale skin, brown hair, and blue eyes, right? Exact same. So there I am. And all of a sudden it's like, Loki's here and he's here, right? He's, he's, he's in Ryan Holiday in that face, looking back at me. He's in the guy that I met at the bar. He's in this person that I looked that just, you know, came up on the Google search and he's right there on my Netflix screen, right? I put together, uh, I put together a, a compilation of uh, all those four photos together, right? <laughs> of, of like those, <laughs> those. Um, uh, well, not the guy, because I hadn't actually gotten a photo of him when, when we met, um, but Tom Hiddleston, right? That Loki kind of look, right? That is very, very, you know, that is, that is typical um, of his archetype, right? That he embodies, that we tend to see Loki portrayed as. And, um, and at this point I'm just like, I'm just like, like, it looks like, like Loki is just looking at me from like every possible place. Like I'm looking, I'm like, here's his face, here's his face, here's his face. Right. And so that is a pretty key sign that an archetype is coming through wanting to work with us. So I ran myself a bath and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. I just totally got punked. Right. <laughs> I got punked by a Norse deity. And, um, and I said, I was like, all right good job. You got me. <laughs> and, um, and I appreciate you not actually causing any harm in my life. Like this is a practical joke, but it didn't really do any damage. I'm willing to laugh at myself. Okay. Um, so thank you. Right. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I said, all right, like I'm, I'm listening, I'm open to working with you, whatever, whatever you're, you know, whatever you propose, like I'm all ears. I'm open to ideas. Right. And we didn't, um, 
we didn't really end up working with each other that strongly until the following year. There just wasn't anything that really came through really strongly. Um, and then there was a whole bunch of stuff that came through really strongly. <laughs> and I ended up dressing last year for Halloween. I make a tradition every year on Halloween for the last couple of years as I've been engaging in my spiritual practice. I've made a practice of dressing as the archetype that has shown up for me the most powerfully in my process of growth and transformation. So I dressed as Loki for Halloween last year in a tribute to him to thank him for working with me and for arranging and orchestrating some exciting circumstances in my life, um, which are a completely different story. Um, but that, that is how I got catfished by a Norse god. <laughs> I, uh, I heard that very afternoon that he wanted to work with me. I asked, how can I trust him? And later that day, I got catfished by someone who exactly embodies, uh, someone pretending to be uh, uh, someone who exactly embodies that same energy of tricksterhood, right? So it's Loki basically embodying temporarily, you know, coming in and orchestrating these circumstances and giving these nudges uh, to this, you know, this guy that I met at this bar, this guy named Jacob. And, um, and having him uh, uh, say whatever he needed to say for me to believe temporarily that this person was Ryan Holiday, right? So it's like a trickster pretending to be a trickster, pretending to be a trickster, right? Punking me <laughs> with, um, you know, with, uh, uh, um, you know, <laughs> essentially, essentially like tricksterhood upon tricksterhood upon tricksterhood, right? So that's one of those things that like, I look at that story and I'm just like, you can't make this up. You can't make up how that happened in literally the same night and played out over that weekend, right? As I started slowly putting the pieces together, it was just wild. So that <laughs> is yet another story um, that backs up the idea that magic is real. Magic is real and uh, it is a power that when we go on the path toward embracing it and understanding it and practicing it in our everyday lives, we're going to see more and more and more synchronicities and just wild, uncanny things showing up and happening for us. And it's, uh, and it's really exciting. So if this sounds like a path that you want to go on, if you want to have these really exciting and wild experiences uh, with deities and archetypes literally showing up in your field before you and wanting to work with you, right? And showing up in support of you and uh, orchestrating events on your behalf, right? Not just to punk you, but also to support you and to support your growth process. Um, then I encourage you check out the Myths and Magic course that I am currently enrolling for. You can go to you you can go ahead and see um, on my profile. You're going to see some flyers for the Myths and Magic course. You can read and learn about the details there. We start next Sunday, October 18th, um, and we go for four weeks. Four weeks of Sunday lectures. Thursday evening group calls and a 24 seven private Facebook group for support where you can also post your questions, your processes and your homework, your fun, playful homework that we get to do together. We're going to be make, playing dress up, making vision boards on Pinterest, making playlists, right? Everything to do to call in these archetypal energies so that we can start to learn how to call them in, how to work with them, how to embody them for the purpose of transformation and growth, right? Because we don't want to just um, concentrate on the patterns that we want to stop, right? We don't want to be in this energy of self-denial where it's like, oh, um, I know everything that I want to not do anymore, right? But if we put too much focus on um, the negative, on the thing that we're walking away from, like beating ourselves up for it, um, ultimately that is, uh, that's not going to be helpful, um, if we don't also have a component that says, what is it that we do want? Can we engage in this in a way that's playful, in a way that's fun, right? In a way that is going to uh, support our energy um, to transform using ideas and archetypes uh, that are going to, that basically we're inspired to step into as part of our growth thinking like, well, if I don't want to be this old person and do these old things that I was doing, if I do want to transform, if I want to grow, what do I want that to look like? What archetypal energies am I going to call in to say, yes, I want to step into being more of this in the world. I want to take my power, my agency back, and I want to choose to an extent how I walk through the world, which will change the results then that I get in the world 
uh, the way people respond to me uh, and the way that ultimately I'm perceived, right? So if this sounds like fun to you, this is really, really powerful magic. So go ahead and shoot me a PM. We'll hop on a call this week and we'll get you signed up before Sunday. I'm super excited to begin this course. I'm excited that uh, uh, so many of you joined me today. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, uh, yeah, I will, uh, I will be going live for a few more of these stories over the coming weeks. So stay tuned. And if they're calling to you, you know, shoot me a PM and we'll go ahead and hop on that call. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Take care and I'll see you next week.